Texas alert now. We are just getting word out of Texas that billionaire Ross Perot has died after a five-month battle with cancer. Perot is perhaps best remembered as the independent candidate for president in 1992. Bill Clinton went on to win that election, but George H.W. Bush lost his re-election bid. Perot had just turned 89. The man at the center of all of this in those years was Ed Rollins, the campaign manager for Ross Perot. And welcome back. Thank you. Our conversation continues. The first time you met Perot. Uh, he's a very charming guy. Uh, the great similarity between him and Trump, self-made businessman. Uh, uh, what, what he didn't understand is the, is the rough and tough of, of, of politics. Uh, he did not. And, and, and once he started being scrutinized as a candidate, uh, you know, there was a point in time where he was leading all three. He was at 39 percent June 1st of the election year, uh, and both Bush and Clinton were behind him. But once he started being scrutinized by the media, what have you, he didn't like it. Uh, where in the, in the case of Trump, Trump loves it. Trump gets in the in the fight and basically. But to show you the power of, of, of him, he had a 1-800 number, which is the, the state of the art. He had six million people call and volunteer to be a part of that. There was a there was a phenomenal movement. Uh, and if he wouldn't have dropped out, uh, uh, you know, he, he I'm not saying he would have won, but he certainly would would have been uh, done better than the 19 percent that he had. A wonderful family man as well. Absolutely. He had a son by his name, uh, Ross Perot Jr., great, his great family. son, great CEO family. Of, of, of the company, Perot Group. He was asked recently in an interview to describe his father. He described him as a great family man, wonderful father, but at the end of the day, a wonderful humanitarian. He said, quote, every day he came to work trying to figure out how he could help somebody. Well, he did that. He was he was extraordinary in, in the efforts that he made for other people, and both in Dallas and across the country. Uh, he was a great patriot and a great American. Uh, uh, again, politics wasn't his cup of tea. Uh, and he and he said to me one day, he said, "We don't want to run a conventional campaign." I said, "I don't care. I want to just run a campaign." Uh, he, he didn't understand the, the <laughs> politics uh, and, the, and the role of the news media, particularly. So. You and I have debated this in the years past. Yes. And let's debate it now again. Good. Did Ross Perot cost George H.W. Bush a second term? George H.W. Bush was 60% uh, of the country at one point in time was looking for someone new. Pro filled that gap for a period of time. Uh, uh, he, did he take votes away from uh, Trump, uh, I mean, from, a pro, from a, a Bush. Bush. Uh, I think he did, but I think at the end of the day, Clinton gained when Pro dropped out. Clinton gained. And, and, and but there were but four, you've there, made the case I made the case. Of, there, were four million, there were four million Republicans who voted for Bill Clinton. Those four million voters, if they would have voted for Bush, who'd been the president, chairman of the party, what have you, he would have won. It wasn't pro voters per se. What pro did was create a distraction, give some time for Clinton to get, uh, get his campaign together. Uh, but at the end of the day, he did not cost him the election. For those tuning in now, Ross Perot, we just got word, has passed away at the age of 89. A family spokesperson has confirmed that after a five-month battle with leukemia, he's passed away. Uh, he was diagnosed at just in February. This was a quick battle that he had. He had a massive secondary infection the next month that nearly killed him, according to his family. He fought back, and in this description, uh, he showed up at the office most days in his dark suit with the omnipresent American flag on his lapel. He was a tough, he was a tough little banny rooster, let me tell you. He was as tough as anybody I've ever been up against. Oh. Didn't make my life miserable. <laughs> he was a very successful businessman yes, and did a big deal with IBM, the yes, late sixties. That really catapulted Absolutely. his business career and his, his personal fortune as well. Why then did he make the decision in the late 1980s that he thinks he thought, you know, I, I need to, pres to be president because. Uh, he, he didn't think Bush was doing the right things on the economy. Uh, he clearly thought the deficit was too severe. And uh, uh, he also thought that the Mexican trade deals were bad deals. Uh, and that he was, uh, he was, he, he really tapped into the same group of voters that Donald Trump tapped into just. So the Mexico deals on NAFTA at, at, that time, at that time, he didn't like it. Didn't like it. And this is a guy from Texas who would know very well what Abs happens when absolutely. you do business across borders. No, absolutely. And just, uh, uh, and, and there, was, there was a little, little argument between he and the, the Bush family. Uh, I don't think it was, I don't think it was personal. Some people has made it out to be. I think he just, I think he cared. And what happened is he'd go on television, go on the Today Show, go on Larry King, and he'd get all these people saying, him, run, you got to run, Ross. You're the kind of guy we need as a country. Very much like the Trump, the Trump movement. Of well, on the Larry ago. King Show, you remember the night he did the debate sure. with Al Gore. Sure. I mean, it was, it really spiked in the ratings sure at, at a time when CNN really had the field to itself in right. the early 1990s. Right. Did Ross Perot embrace or did he have a disdain for the media 
and the necessities that was required. He had a disdain for the mainstream media. He loved Larry King. He loved uh, the Today Show. He loved certain people that treated him well, but he didn't like the mainstream media. Uh, and he basically, uh, he, he could have captured them, but he, he wanted to basically do his own thing, didn't want to accommodate the press, didn't want to have press planes, didn't want to basically put out press schedules. And that's what did him in the end. And what was it like to, to work so closely with him? He was tough. Uh, you know, he basically, uh, uh, he didn't understand politics, uh, and, and he, he wanted results day one. And uh, he was very tight with his money. He promised me he'd spend three, four hundred. A billionaire. <laughs> a billionaire. A uh, billionaire who he got on one of his jets and he basically had paper cups. Uh, promised uh, Hamilton Jordan and I were the co managers that uh, he'd spend 150, 200 million dollars, but getting every penny out of him was hard. <laughs> well, there's a reason why he <laughs> was rich. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. we worked. So. <laughs> uh, why did he seek your counsel at that time? You know, I'd run Reagan's campaign, and I think for that perspective, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he saw me sort of as someone who was. Want to change? I was always kind of an outsider. I, uh, you know, I liked I liked the, the idea of taking on the Washington establishment. Uh, I had uh, got a little disillusioned with Bush. Uh, I was a chairman of the congressional committee when Bush broke his tax pledge, and I thought that was a very sacred pledge. So. But you stand by it today that you don't think Ross Perot cost him a second term. I don't think he cost him a second term. But you have numbers that I, prove it. I have numbers, and you've shown them. To I've, me shown in them the past. I've shown them. I've shown them. You stand by them. I stand by them, and I'll tell you, the Bushes think I cost them the election. So yeah, I was. I know that. Right. So when um, you think about the late '80s and the early '90s, and you juxtapose that with 2019, right. how would a guy like Ross Perot do in American politics today? If he would run all the way through, uh, you know, could he be elected governor or senator or something like that? Sure. Could he be elected president? That's a little, that's a little bigger jump. So. So he could not. I don't think he could be president. But you saw, talk about this, this bank of six million Americans. You, you do that at a time when you don't have social media. Ex ex you can't recruit them on Facebook. So, but let me, let me tell you the great part of the story. Yeah, I please. went into them and I said, where are all those names? He put them on computer cards and they locked them in a vault. And I said, I need those names. I need to send the mail. I need to basically get people that to, they've all volunteered and want to do something. We need to take action on them. Uh, he said, I'm not going to send them junk mail. And I said, it's not junk mail, it's a letter from... He had no understanding of politics. He had never had a PR firm uh, in, his, in his company. Uh, uh, he, he is instinctive. He was very instinctive. And, and he, he, he tapped into uh, very much like a Reagan or a Trump. They understood the, where the country was and where the disaffection was. But he didn't, he didn't like politics, per se. How would you describe his impact on politics today? I think he proved that an independent can run again. I mean, I think the key thing is that 19% was well, a real campaign. That was a comeback, uh, uh, a 30-day campaign. We, you know, I dropped out uh, early, and he dropped out the day after I left. Uh, and he went all summer, didn't campaign, came back in, in September, uh, got into the debates, uh, and obviously made a difference there. That was pro that's probably what cost Bush the election. You, you want, th That was it? Yeah. That's what you think? That's what I think. Yeah. You wonder what a younger Donald Trump was observing from afar. He's well, I a think, New York businessman. Sure. He's thinking. Sure, he's think, looking at Ross Perot, and what's he think? I think the same. Th I mean, I think he th he thought he could do it. He, he thought for a long time. Uh, you know, there's there's been this great untapped, pop, you know, the Tea Party movement, the pro movement, the Trump movement are all kind of the same same element. They all have the same, same thread that ties right. them together. Which is sort of the anti-Washington yeah. anti-establishment. So. Uh, representative for the family, uh, James Fuller, describing um, Ross Perot's death here, 89 years old, died after a five-month battle with leukemia, ran for president twice, 1992 right. and 1996, about which we are speaking now. In a statement, he says, quote, in business and in life, Ross was a man of integrity and action, a true American patriot and a man of rare vision, principle, and deep compassion. He touched the lives of countless people through his unwavering support of the military and veterans and through his charitable endeavors. Talk a little bit about that. Ed. He was, he, he went to Annapolis. Uh, uh, he didn't stay in the military, uh, uh, you know, served out uh, his obligation. But you would think uh, he'd go into his office, it was like the Annapolis Hall of Fame. I mean, he, he, he was always for the POWs. He basically would do everything he could to be supportive of the American cause. Uh, you know, he, he, there was a lot of contradictions in his life, uh, but at the end of the day, he was a true American, loved this country deeply and passionately, mm -hmm. uh, and people loved him back. Yeah. Uh, what, what were the contradictions? The contradictions were he went in the Navy, but he thought he didn't want to stay. He went through Annapolis, but didn't want to make a career out of it. Uh, wanted to get out. His obligation was five years. Wanted to get out after two and a half years. Uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, he liked to control things, and obviously, as a young Navy ensign, you don't get to control a lot. So, if he were to have risen to the level of president, 
What do you think his policies would have been? How do, how do you think he would have changed America? Uh, I think the budget would have been very, very important. I think the deficit was what he always talked about, and he thought we were spending way too much money. Tough to do, tough, even today, no, right? tough to do. And, and I think the key thing was very much like, like a Trump. Uh, uh, you know, he, didn't, he did not want to be a partisan Republican or Democrat. Uh, and, the, and the key thing was always, uh, always uh, uh, how, how would you deal with a Congress if you didn't have your own party there? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's where we're Tough to do also. Awesome. Yeah, Great reflection. Right. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We remember the life of Ross Perot. His family informs us he is dead at the age of 89. We will be right back.